till this time if you are confused or if you are thinking that we are just randomly copying and pasting code uh, you are not exactly wrong that's what we were doing and on top of that i actually avoided talking about a lot of things and that is because we needed to understand a couple of basic things before i can explain all of those things so right now this is the video where i explain all of those things and we start with the basic request and the response cycle so just imagine that we get a request and this request is received by our application which is written in django so the first outermost layer would be like an http server maybe it would be like nginx or apache http is just a stateless protocol http can be implemented in any language it can be c++ it can be python it can be java or it can be anything and some of the most popular http servers are nginx and apache so now what's going to happen is we get a request and this request is taken up by our nginx and or apache servers the next thing is this request is then handed over to something which is called as wisgi so if we go back to our, our application we can see that we have a file called as wisgi now again what's happening is this wisgi this is actually just a specification and it is not an application g unicorn that you can see this is the implementation of the wisgi specifications so if you go to google so this is what a wisgi is so you can see that it is just a specification and g unicorn is the implementation so now what's happening is once our server which is nginx or apache it gets a request but your django is written in python now we need some kind of an interface that can translate the request into something that django which is written in python can understand so this thing is handled by our wisgi now if we are running asynchronous server then it would be asgi and in that case maybe instead of g unicorn we would be using uv icon or there is also something which is called as hypercon but for the sake of simplicity just imagine that we are running a synchronous server by using g unicorn or wisgi so again let's start with the request the user gives a request the request is intercepted by our http server the server then forwards the request to our wisgi now wisgi is going to translate that request into something that our django application can understand and the first thing it is going to hit is our middlewares now our middlewares are just like our views they receive a request and they give back a response but most of the time they have to slightly modify the request now if you are wondering from where all of this middlewares come now let me show you so let me go to my my side and if you go to settings and this is the top let us scroll a little bit down over here so after installed apps we have another list over here so you can see that django already comes with a lot of inbuilt middlewares so as you can see this is for our security this is for our sessions and so on so all of this middlewares are built right into django and if we want we can write our own middlewares as well so again just imagine middlewares to be like your views they get a request they process the request and they just forward the response now let us go back and let us see what's going to happen next now this middlewares they are going to forward the request to our urls now again with the urls we have two different parts the first one is the urls inside our project so our project is my site inside my site we have the main urls now what django is going to do is it is going to look for this specific name called as url patterns and inside this list it is going to scan from the top to the bottom so first it will look for this path polls and it will look for the urls inside our polls application after that it will go to our polls application inside our urls and here it is going to search for all of the patterns that we specify in case if it finds the right url then it will render the right output 
otherwise it will simply give a 404 response back now let us go back and let us see the next part of our puzzle so what's happening next so after we find the right url that request is then forwarded to our views so let's see what's going to happen next so this is the urls file inside our polls application so here we have not specified any path but if you go to your my site and urls the path is very specific that is polls and slash so whenever we get a match of polls and a slash it's going to go inside your polls application inside the urls and it is going to find a match right over here now what it does is since we have a match it invokes the view that we have mentioned right over here so what django does is okay fine it finds a match right over here now it has to invoke our index function now let us go to our index which is inside our polls application inside our views file and here it is so what's going to happen is the index view is going to get the request and as we already know since we get a request we have to also give back an http response so let us go back over here and see what's happening next now at times it may happen that you have to talk with a database now normally this database are handled by our models file so if you go back to our application inside our polls application we have a file for models right now we don't have any models but as we progress in the tutorials we would be creating a couple of models so what's going to happen next is either we would need to read something from the database or we would need to write something to the database and after all of these things are done then our view this is going to generate an http response and which has to finally be returned to our user so after processing all of these things we create a response object which is again written back to the user and finally this closes the request and the response cycle so i hope by now a lot of things must be clear to you and let us do a couple of more experiments in the next video